Sup dudes, Crazy here, welcome back to Marvel's Avengers and today let's kick it off with some really awesome secrets and things the game doesn't actually tell you. Hopefully these will be useful, some of them you can't really notice them until it is too late and there were definitely a few occasions in which I kinda wished I knew many of these. So if you enjoyed this video at any point, make sure to leave a like on it and let's jump right into it. I also want to give a huge shout out to Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video. Instant Gaming sells games at some of the cheapest prices you can find around. So if you also enjoy big gaming discounts, go ahead and check out their website by following my links in the description box down below. Anyway, there are a lot of really awesome interactions in the game that you can miss if you don't keep an eye out open, especially during that main campaign that kinda groups up all of the characters, there's a lot of interactions that you can have with them, but even if you didn't interact in any way and just focused on doing those missions, you can still do that later on. And I definitely recommend you go ahead and do so because there are some really awesome unique ones. So whenever you find yourself on the Chimera again, go ahead and speak with the other Avengers which will be physically over there doing their stuff like um, checking the command rooms, the war tables and they might even go into other locations and talking with other NPCs. And it's really awesome because they have very unique dialogues over there that they will actually use once you get close to them and oftentimes they are even relevant to what you just did or what you are about to do. But most important, make sure you are visiting visiting all of those rooms over there in the main hall. I especially love the interaction between Captain America and Thor's hammer when you visit his room, but of course you can go ahead and try to pick up that hammer with all of the other six characters as there are some really unique and surprising ones over there accompanied by some dialogue options. Nonetheless, let's move over to the next one and let's talk about a very important subject that many people kind of overlook and that is the mission star rating. So you've likely noticed this when completing various missions that at the end of them you have this star rating over there at the top that kind of is a performance indicator. So every mission has a number of main objectives. Depending how you fare in them, this is going to influence your final score. So for example, letting some of your teammates die, um, letting enemies progress through that objective or even more so not killing them fast enough can affect your performance into that and you will be ranked from 1 all the way up to 5 stars. And at the end of the mission all of those objective stars are going to be averaged out and if you completed all of them with five stars you are going to get full five stars for that kind of mission but this does seem to play a role into the quality and the rarity of the item that is going to be rewarded from completing this mission so i've noticed that the rarity of the items is slightly higher usually so instead of getting a rare or an epic as it was listed in the mission card sometimes you also have a higher chance to get a legendary instead it doesn't mean that it can't happen at four stars but i've noticed it way more often at four stars and above especially at the five star rating on top of that it also seems to affect the star rating on the item itself so for example in many of the missions that i only completed with three stars i oftentimes only got items up to three stars and sometimes even only one star of quality so that obviously will affect those stats on the gear and the perks themselves and this is why you should definitely strive to go ahead and just get those five stars all the time but most important pay attention so that nobody in your team dies because that's the number one thing that will affect your star rating moving on to number three let's talk about the inventory locker right off the bat if you look at your regular inventory you will notice that you don't really have that much space like a dozen or so items it's pretty much filled and now you have to go somewhere else and actually take your items and while the game already teaches you in the beginning that you can just go on the chimera and there's this room right here on the second deck floor you will find these terminals that basically open up that inventory locker and here is where you will find additional 300 of those inventory slots where your access loot is going to be located but you can also access this from the end of the expedition so from the end expedition screen once you access that mission star rating you can go ahead and press this button right here to open up your inventory locker and immediately access all of those items you even have filters over there to filter like the rarity the level even for each specific hero and if you want to here is the location you want to go in and mass salvage everything you can mark items for deletion even like an entire inventory if you want to and then simply press a button and you can delete all of those items at the same time and also get all of the crafting mats in the process moving on to number four a small tip that i wish i knew in the beginning of the game was that many of the heroes in the game actually have alternate weapon modes 
that you can switch between using the left and the right arrow keys on your controller or the mouse wheel on your mouse. And this is basically for characters like Iron Man and Black Widow that do have those alternate weapons to switch to, especially after investing skill points to unlock them. For example, for Iron Man you can switch between repulsors, lasers and rockets, each coming with their own skill lines and additional abilities to unlock, so this is the way to go. Meanwhile, for Black Widow you can switch between her dual pistols, SMGs and the high caliber pistol, again assuming that you have unlocked these in the primary skill page. It's not such a big deal, many of you probably already know that, but in the beginning of the game I kinda struggled with this since I kinda, well, didn't know where to find the additional weapons. But let's go over to number 5 and talk about DNA chests and DNA keys. So DNA chests are basically these blue ones that you've likely stumbled upon already, usually you find them in vault maps like the snowy tundra region or the jungle map that you can unlock later on. They do require that key to open them up but they also provide additional crafting mats which by the way are going to be extremely useful and you will need a ton of them if you want to reach the max level cap of 150 and second of all it's also going to provide additional gear drops oftentimes you will see that there's even two or three items dropping from the same chest but you will find DNA keys from a number of places usually it's from from defeating humanoid enemies and bosses and this is usually what you find in villain sectors. So villain sectors are something that you get once per day from all of your factions so go at any of your factions, at the representative, go ahead, take up the daily mission and this is going to be a villain sector. But in that case the mission card is going to list that DNA key as a reward oftentimes. Coming up at number 6 you should pay attention to your collectibles tab especially the ones about comic books because comic books if you collect them they have a permanent stat increase for all of your stats over there it's not too big but it does make a difference when you have to squeeze every single bit of your character in order to go on the toughest challenge the cool thing about this is that you can find them quite often assuming that you also go in go off the beaten path discover the additional objectives especially the ones that will provide additional chests to open up many of the chests in the game including the ones that are more unique as well as the ones that provide only magic do have a rather good chance at providing a random comic. But if you want to take it a step forward, go ahead and check out your harm challenges as these all list a guaranteed reward which is one of those collectibles. It's gonna be super useful in the end game when you want to get the last bits and there's also a couple of them in the Chimera that will list a specific comic book that will be given to you if you end it. And I don't think you can find these in any other way since, well, I kind of have almost all of them but I'm missing the exact two that were listed in that mission. Moving on to number 7, let's say you progress through the game, you've reached a number of other locations, but even more so, at one point in the game, there is another base outside of the Chimera that you can go ahead and visit. And once I finished the main campaign, I kept struggling, how would I even be able to get back at it, because I simply didn't know how to do it. So the game doesn't directly tell you this, but there is a certain way to teleport to any of your bases including the chimera from any of the word tables that you might find and that is by hovering over that region card or in this case over the chimera card and you will notice that there is an additional button over there that lets you directly teleport to it and this is basically what you will use in order to reach those locations even if you're on the quinjet you can go ahead and do that and you will reach these locations especially for that second faction location that you will want to find since there are some more vendors over there and quest givers. This brings us to the final point which is all about those patterns which is basically what you use to unlock new outfits and sometimes even nameplates. So there's a few ways you can find these in, of course there are a lot of high level missions and quest chains that will automatically list something like this. Especially pay more attention to those faction missions and hero iconic missions as not only will they sometimes list these patterns but they also directly list some of these really awesome legendary outfits. On top of that you can also get these randomly from high level crates by completing missions and also from rewards that you get from those faction NPCs when you level up with those factions. It's kind of random but I believe above level 10 you will get at least a few of these. They do range in quality so they can go up to legendary and they do unlock a random outfit for all of your 6 characters. This means that yes if you play with somebody like Thor you can get some suits for Iron Man for example. And if you do happen to get some duplicates, you will instead
instead get some units as a kind of compensation though i believe it's too low because you only get about 250. nonetheless this is it for now now let me know down below how many of these things on the list did you actually know in the meantime also make sure you leave a like on this video maybe even subscribe and activate that notification bell and i will see you guys in the next one